Let me ask for some dating advice from Jordan Peterson. How do you find on that topic the love of your life? That's a good question. I was asked that multiple times on my tour, three times in a row, in fact, because we ask people to use this Slido gadget. That's a to, popular question. To vary. It always came up to the top. And <laughs> I got asked that three times in a row, and I didn't have a good answer. And then I thought, why don't I have a good answer? I thought, oh, I know why. Because that's a stupid question. <laughs> so so why? Yeah. Why? Because it's, it's putting the cart before the horse. Here's the right question. Mm -hmm. How do I make myself into the perfect date? You answer that question, and you will not have any problem answering the previous question. It's like, what do I want in a partner? Mm -mm. If I offered everything I could to a partner, who would I be? You work on that. Ask that question. Just ask. Just ask yourself, okay, I have to be the person that women would want. Hmm. Okay, what do they want? Clean. That's not a bad start. Reasonably good physical shape. So healthy. Productive. Generous. Honest. Willing to delay gratification. So you dance with a woman. It's like, what's she doing? What are you two doing? Well, it's a pattern. You're, there's patterns happening around you. That's the music. Patterns. Patterns of being. That's the music. Now, can you align yourself with the patterns of being gracefully? That's what she's checking out. And then can you do that with her? And then can you do that in a playful and attentive manner and keep your bloody hands to yourself for at least a minute? And so can you dance in a playful manner? It's like you can go through this in your imagination and you know, you'll know, you know. And then you think, well, how far am I from those things? And the answer is usually, man, it's a pretty horrible abyss separating you from that ideal. But the harder you work on offering other people what they need and want, the more people will line up to play with you. And so it's the wrong question. It's like, how can I be the best partner possible? And then you think, well, if I do that, people will just take advantage of me. And that's the non-naive objection, right? Because the naive person saying, well, I'll be good and everyone will treat me right. It's like the cynic says, no, I'll be good and someone will take me out. And then you think, well, what do you do about that objection? And the answer is, well, you factor that in. And that's why you're supposed to be, what is it? As soft as a dove and as wise as a serpent. It's like, I know you're full of snakes. I know it. Maybe I know it more than you do. But we'll play anyways. And Take that's a the good, risk that's, anyway. That's right, voluntarily, right? It's like, and th what's so cool about that is that even though the person you're dealing with is full of snakes, if you offer your hand in trust and it's real, you will evoke the best in them. Yeah. And that's true even, I've dealt with people who are pretty damn crim criminal and pretty psychopathic and sometimes dangerously so. And you tread very lightly when you're dealing with someone like that, especially if they're intoxicated. And even then, your best bet is that alert trust. It's the, it's the only, it's the fact that the only thing I know that, like I had one client who was a paranoid, he was paranoid psychopath. That's a bad combination. He was a bad guy, man. He had like four restraining orders on him. And restraining orders don't work on the sort of people that you put restraining orders on. And he used to be harassed now and then by, you know, a bureaucrat in a bank with, with delusions of power. And he would say to them, he, he used to kind of act this out to me when I was talking to him, he'd say, I'm going to be your worst nightmare. <laughs> and he meant it. Yeah. And he would do it. He had this obsessional, psychopathic vengeance that was just like right there, paranoid to the hilt. And paranoid people are hyper acute. So they're watching you for any sign of deceit or manipulation. And they're really good at it 
because like they're 100% fo that's what paranoia is it's 100% focus on that and even under those circumstances if you step carefully enough you can maybe you can avoid the axe that's a good thing to know if you ever meet someone truly dangerous 